what I want people to focus and take away from this video, forget about Chanos, he's gone, he's closing shop. Watch CESA. That is where it's currently happening. The largest net put holder of Tesla's stocks. So that is a huge number of put options. There are many investors who buy Tesla stock, believing it's a once in a generation company that will rise to become the largest company in the world as it disrupts many, many markets beyond auto and into AI, energy, bots, and autonomous driving. But at the exact same time, there are many investors who are betting that the company will fail. Tesla currently holds the distinction of being the second most shorted large cap stock in the S&P 500 with short interest of $18.63 billion. Our guest today has done deep dive research on who is shorting Tesla, why they're doing it, and how this might turn out perfectly for us Tesla bulls, as there are now signs that the shorts are losing and closing up shop. Alexandra Mertz was previously a fund manager in charge of the biggest European investment fund portfolio. She's also held a senior position at a global rating agency responsible for all real estate fund ratings in Europe before creating her own companies in Berlin, France, and now the U.S. She's well known as Tesla Boomer Mama, as her deep dive research has proven time and time again to be helpful to Tesla. Welcome, Alexandra. Thank you so much for doing this research and joining me today. Hi, Herbert. Always a pleasure. So you've done an amazing deep dive here. We've got some slides to show the research and who is shorting. This is something that many of us Tesla investors have been curious about. You'll mm -hmm. talk to us about... Uh, 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 we're going to talk about Microsoft, um, and we're going to talk about who's the biggest short. We're going to talk about uh, just just what, what, how big of an impact this is to Tesla investors. So why don't you start by kind of laying the land of where where are we with this? Sure. So we're not at all in the period 2016, 2019 anymore, right? Short interest in te Tesla was huge at that period when, you know, people thought, that the ramp of the Model 3 wouldn't work, that the Model Y wouldn't be successful. I mean, the irony, best-selling car in the world now. Um, so we're not in that scenario at all anymore. At the moment, short selling is somewhere between 2 and 4%, mostly around 3%. Currently, we're at 3% with about 19 uh, million shares outstanding in the short in the short section. So 19 billion. And the... the, the um, part that is surprising is who is shortening, right? Because we always hear of the chainuses of this world. We now know that he's uh, closing shop at the end of the year and Tesla, his Tesla short position is certainly interesting to study because uh, he, he always appeared so convinced of being short. But if you look actually what happened over time, we'll get into that chart a little bit later on. It wasn't always that convincing. So, um, what I wanted to do is position where we are today. Is it really a threat to Tesla? Is a short squeeze possible? Um, why do I think it's actually not as huge of a topic uh, as it, you know, as people pretend it is? And wanted to give you a maximum of information of the number one hedge fund that is short on Tesla, because these guys are really under the radar. And we don't hear from them. I think for lots of people, this will be a surprise who this one, number one short seller is. So let's get right into it. Yeah, I love it. That's why we love whenever you do research, because it's information that we don't, just don't know enough about. And it's always helpful. Um, so let's start with, obviously, the, you know, it. despite everything you just said, right, it still is the largest, most popular short yeah. position. So this is uh, news from Umbisam saying yeah. that according to Goldman Sachs Group's latest hedge fund trend report, Tesla remained the most popular short position as of October 31st. This is despite the stock having risen more than 90% year to date. Hedge funds tracked by Goldman had short positions worth nearly 19 billion in the stock according to investment bank banked numbers. That's exactly right. The exact number is 18.6. And uh, yeah, this, you know, it sounds like a huge number, $18.6 billion of stock worth. But you have to know, obviously, that uh, the the current market cap of Tesla is seven hundred. What is it? Seven hundred fifty billion. So that's why we say it is just you know around the three percent mark. So it's not a lot in percentage of the market cap, and it's not a lot in percentage of the float. When we talk about float, we deduct the four, twelve to fourteen percent that insiders are holding. And it still is not a huge percentage. And then if you compare it to other car makers, the legacy car makers, Ford has about a 4% short position. GM has about a 2% uh, short position. 
So that is just in line with about Tesla. Mm -hmm. But but mm -hmm. um, the 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 real ones that are short in you know when we're talking now innovative car makers are the Fiskers. Fisker has a forty three percent short position. Um, Nikola obviously has a twenty three percent. Um, and uh, Rivian has a 13% short position. So yes, Tesla is the second largest of the mega caps to be short. There's no doubt mm -hmm. about it. But in terms of other car makers, if you want to stay in the car making field, it is just about lined with the legacy. So so I just want to take a little bit the, the stress out of it. When people think of a short uh, position, there, there are two positions. Either they hope for a short squeeze, that can still happen, especially with that number one play I'm getting to in a couple of minutes. Um, but it's not, um, it shouldn't be seen as a stress to the, to, the, to the stock. It really is not. They're insignificant today. Right, got it. But obviously, because it's big dollars, we do see sure. these shorts uh, spreading disinformation, misinformation. They're just battling it out <laughs> Um, yeah. you know, paying off but other even, organizations. Even the liquidity of the stock, it would take less than a day to cover all the stocks. Okay. okay? Yes, that one day the, the share price will go up, but it's not as if this is a movement of three, four, five trading days. That can happen in some positions when really people are short and are squeezed out. It can take them quite a while to run after the stock. With the current liquidity in the Tesla stock, it won't take more than a, a day to cover it all. Okay, let's get going. Show me what this okay. is. Okay. So this chart is just a year to date uh, heat map. And as you can see, I pulled out the Tesla in the, in the center. Tesla at that moment was up 90%, was the second highest of the clear, the clear green in this are the ones that have the highest performance. So Tesla ran up. Now, obviously there's a reason for that. December, 2022 was tough. Uh, Elon still selling for Twitter and lots of people squeezed out that were margin calls and tax harvesting. So we, we entered the year 2023 with a very low stock price. So being up 90% from a very low stock price is not that astonishing. Let's keep that fair. But it is true, and we'll get to that in a second, that precisely the biggest shorts today entered then Meaning when the stock was around 100, they hoped it would go to 50 and started <laughs> shortening. And here we are now 90% <laughs> higher. And, and you will see what happened to those. And I have proof for that. And that's why what's so crazy wow. about this whole thing that they were caught at the worst moment. They were, they were in this euphoria of October, November, December. Oh my God, the stock is going further down. We're right. Suddenly all our thesis on Tesla not being worth anything is playing out. Let's jump on it. And they jumped on it on the worst possible mm. moment. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the second chart, which um, somebody posted a couple of days ago saying these are the three-year returns of major hedge funds. And I just pointed out that two of those, Millennium and um, I can't even read it here. So it's, I think it's Bellany, um, have the certain returns. Now, why did I point it out? Because their 2023 year to dates are lower than the higher ones, right? So these are these are the two that have that are among the, the the higher ranked short sellers, and they seem to pay it dearly in the last column in the 2023 year to date um, performance compared to their other peers. Okay, so these are the major Tesla short sellers, Millennium and Ben. Not yet. Yeah, well, there are gotcha. two of them. They're the number two and the number eighteen. The, the gotcha. number one is going to come in a second. Okay. This was just to position them there. Okay, and so this is from a, um, a website I subscribed to, and I won't any longer because it, it didn't give, give me much more information than that. But what's interesting, and these charts will come one by one, the top ones in a second, is uh, here on the bottom left the today's market sentiment, and they give Tesla a market sentiment of a green seven, meaning there are just not enough short sellers to make a difference. I mean, obviously we're not mm. at 10. I didn't think, find any other stock that was actually higher than seven, but I didn't spend lots of time on it. But you can see that the historical market sentiment, which is on the right of uh, the bottom, exactly that one, is always oscillating between two and eight. This is this year and is currently rather on the higher end at seven. Exactly that. That's where, where it is. So I found that interesting. This website is it's not giving a lot of, of more information, but that one was a good chart. Okay. And then this is this is derived from that. This is the number of shorts 
in the market. So this is how it went over time. And as you can see on the bottom uh, of the year in, in end of December, the number actually went down below 75 uh, million shares. And then it, in January, beginning of January, so th that's when the stock, stock price was at 100 bucks, they went crazy. They went in and moved the needle from 75, less than 75 million uh, short shares to over 90. So that is when the bulk of the short selling went into the market. Now, some of them learned their lesson at the end of the summer, end of July, and there's st some still building up the position. But what's really the most surprising is how they sold short while the stock was recovering. They really wanted to hammer their conviction at the beginning of the year. Is it true, uh, Alexander, though, that if if you are stock fell from 300 to 100, they come in with shorts, that the actual coming in with shorts could actually depress the stock even further? They were trying yes. to accelerate the momentum and then just have, you know, Completely I guess the right. True. Yeah. Completely true. And nothing of that worked out. Didn't work out for them, luckily for us. But um, okay, yeah. so let's take a look at the next chart here. This is the second so, chart. So this is the same one. This is the same chart, but this time in percentage of the flow, okay. right? So you will see yeah. the same pattern. It's just the first one was in number of shares shortened, and the other one is in a percentage of the flow. And as you can see uh, on the top, I mentioned this 3% number earlier. We're currently at 3.1% of the float. This went up to 3.5. I mean, the chart looks dramatic, but we are now in a really small window of 2.8 to 3.5, oscillating around the 3% short position. That is not a worry. I just want to take this stress out of people thinking, oh my God, Tesla is the second biggest uh, mega cap shortened. Yes, it is, but 3% is very manageable. It takes less than a day to cover these positions if ever there and is a short. Would it be true to say that as we move into a boom market, uh, there's many economists who are saying that you know, short position are starting to capitulate at this point, and that's a sign of that we're going to head to the boom. Could Completely we actually right. see more of them just kind of like jumping up because they're expecting now that interest rates are going to fall in the next year and things might start Completely looking right. good for Tesla? Completely right. And that's why I wanted to concentrate in the, the, the following on this number one position, because he is the only one where I can actually see a squeeze happening on that personal level of that hedge fund. Interesting. If you can predict it, let's get there. So show me this chart, which is uh, looks like the net long short value. It's a list of companies that are um, yes. doing shorts. Yeah. So these are the That's... top 30. And I know okay. this is difficult to read and I will publish this uh, on X when you publish this video, um, because I think this is the list I want to give every quarter to all our ex uh, readers why because this is the 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 for me the best summary of who is really short because there is a mm -hmm. there is a obviously a couple of of market players that can be short for different reasons this table that i get from fintel lists the whole positions of a of a company so if a company has tesla shares also, Tesla calls may have some puts for option strategies, may have because they cover whatever else uh, positions. So just looking at the number of puts out there is not enough. What is important mm -hmm. is you have to see the whole picture of how many have calls, how many have puts, how many have stock, and what is the net of this all. Mm -hmm. And this table, while it's a little bit tiny to read and, and difficult to put up, it has all these, it has all these columns and it has on the right, the net long short position. And as you can see, the number one is Cap uh, Cessa Capital. And that's the one we're going to get into uh, soon. And then comes Millennium. Millennium Management is a huge hedge fund, but they have, and that shows here, they have equity, they have calls and they have puts. So yes, they are currently number two in net, but since they have all three pillars, all three ways of investing, I consider this, this less mm -hmm. of, um, of a straight shooting short, but yeah. more of a portfolio manager. You see what I mean? Um, yes. So for me, it's, it, it's, it's really important that people understand this distinction, whether somebody is really going all in purchasing puts or like the number three, uh, 
all in shortening the stock and having nothing in the call and put uh, put uh, columns, uh, but that the, that there is this netting of of all the positions before we get before we get to conclusions. So these are ranked. I rank them by the net short. Um, size. So the first one is Sessa. We're going to get into Sessa in a moment. And I listed the top 30 and I think you cut them in, in three six segments. How, how did you do it, Herbert? Two, two segments, uh, anything above a hundred and that's in a thousand. So that's a hundred. Yes. What is that? What, what that would be a, it, a billion? Number of shares and it's, um, it's uh, uh, thousands. Million. Yes. So you have 1.4 million uh, puts. A, a billion puts. Yeah, there we go. The equivalent of billion. $1.4 billion puts. Billion puts. Okay. Billion yeah. dollar puts. That's a significant. And then, and so yeah, Sensa. So that's a new thing. That's what you're showing us is uh, we've never heard of Sessa. We've not been talking about Sessa at all. And we really should and, be. And I think they're the type of people who love not being talked about. So I'm sure they're yeah. going to be delighted that they hear about me. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I think honestly, at the moment, when we talk about short sellers, we should concentrate on SES, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about them in a second, but I just wanted mm -hmm. to make sure you have these three slides with all of them, and, and we're going to put them on, on X as well, and that you understand the right-hand column is important, but also if the other three columns are populated, it is probably a market maker. It is probably somebody who does portfolio management, so don't take those people as harshly as the pure short sellers. Right. And what I love about the tables, I don't recognize any of them really. And it's important mm -hmm. that I actually know who they are. So now you've yeah. identified them. So now we're very familiar with it. Okay. And, so and let's on talk. the last one, yeah. if you don't mind, just on the last one, that's how I came across uh, Jeffries. You see that in the middle of the last one, you have Jeffries Financial Group. So they are the ones who just had oh, exactly yes. there, uh, who <laughs> just had this um, downgrade of their price target. Uh, yeah. Here they are with a naked uh, put position. And uh, and so uh, I thought that was that's interesting to know. They were <laughs> the ones that just last week said that the, the analyst said that I, he thinks that Tesla should actually uh, cancel the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck right. is going to be a, it's like, okay, smart sure. dude. Yeah, and I okay. hope you can close your put position after that. That's why okay, he now did just that. A sec exactly. So, the, so let's move on to Cessa. So Cessa is very interesting. As you see on these charts, this is a chart regrouping that table that I showed earlier, where you would have um, information if they ever held Tesla stock if they held call options, and if they held put options. So Cessa only held Tesla put options, and you have it over yeah. time since 2015. So we have your eight years of what Tesla stock price did, that is that fine uh, line, mm -hmm. and obviously there is a, um, uh, all, all that in there. And then you have a little bit of put options. They were already wrong. Uh, in 2019, because the stock went up, as you can see, then they tried it again, beginning of 2021. I don't know whether that really worked out or not. They tried it again, 2022, which were turbulent times. And then at the end of 2022, they decided they're giving it a good shot. So for the first three months, it was a position that was comparable to what they did in the past. And then they went all in. So they went all in between April and June and got so burned already that they split it and only kept a third of it, but are still with that third, the largest put holder, net put holder of Tesla, of Tesla's uh, stocks. So that, and that is a huge number of, uh, of, put, uh, of put options. So the, th those are, these are the real, the real people. So let me tell you a little bit about Cessa Capital Investment. So they're a Delaware limited partnership. It's a hedge fund. There are 13 employees. They're out of New York. And uh, they have to do SEC filing. So there is an SEC filing report from March 2023 where they detail their company structure and also where they come, their clients come from. So most of their clients are filtered through their Cayman Island company. So that allows some investors to stay anonymous. Um, so they say that a Cayman Island company, which is called Cessa Capital International, um, has about $2.1 billion in it. They say it regroups 71 private investors and 91% of those are U.S. persons. Okay, so there's some big money from U.S. people invested in the Cayman Island 
uh, entity. And they also have a Delaware private fund called CESA Capital Special Opportunity 2 and another one that's called CESA uh, Capital Special Opportunity 3. Those have smaller amounts. Um, they have another 20, 23 owners each. So that already rings all alert bells for me. I mean, I, I'm a girl who followed Enron, like we are all now following OpenAI. And whenever, when I heard Enron as an analyst and had all these subsidiaries all over the world and, and shifting money left and right and whatever, it, it still gives me the shivers now. So, I mean, I'm sure they're very clever at what they're doing. There's no doubt about it. But if you start funneling money from the US to the Cayman Islands to come back to the New York hedge fund, ooh, all, all sirens on. So this mm -hmm. whole CESA was set up in 2007 by John Petrie. I think I have a picture from him. He was previously at Gotham Asset Management. And uh, so the, when he, uh, that's him, charming him. Um, and so they started with about 100 million then, and then, uh, you know, built this whole up. So they, at the peak of the best moment, they were at $7 billion. Currently, they are down to 3.75. I know thanks to what our beloved stock. So there we are, right? You see, that is what happened um, when they thought they were right on Tesla stock and, and all that. They also have a couple of, of biotech stuff and, and, and in there, and then it went down again. So now we're at 3.75 billion, which is still a heck of a lot of money. The, the hedge fund's performance in the last quarter was minus 1.4%. And uh, the hedge fund performance over the 12 months from October to end of September was 13.7%. So it's not as if it's completely badly run, right? They have a lot of stock uh, against their, their put position, but that put position is eating up. That losing put position is eating up a lot of their gains. Um, so they are currently the biggest holder of naked puts on, on Tesla with 5.85%. Thousand so five so sorry five point eight million puts on the thirtieth of September so we will always only have a view on them end of each quarter reported six weeks later so you'll hear from Cessa again uh, big, middle of February so their current short position is equivalent to about one point five billion dollars being short of of Tesla so this is huge right for a fund that has a three point what was it seven five billion uh, volume now. Um, but that's only a third of the position they held between April and June, where they carried more than 19 million puts. So that this was enormous. So it shrank from 19 million down to 5.8. So Can, let me yeah. get back to, sorry, go ahead. Herbert, yeah, I was going to ask you a point. question here because I'm trying to understand their logic. Okay. So tell me <laughs> what's going on. So here's, here's a uh, Sessa Capital, uh, the Sessa stock price is the line here. Mm -hmm. And then in January 19th, okay, so they started to try to short the company. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes sense, right? The company might have gone under. They said, okay, it's not looking good for the company. And then the company showed that it was not going to go under. So the stock started mm -hmm. to rise. They, you know, here they might have thought, okay, it's, 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 it's over, you know, overpriced now. So they played a little bit. That was Stocks, after the S&P inclusion, yes. <clears throat> stock skyrocketed. Now mm -hmm. they play a little bit more. Now, is it true, maybe, that because they started to lose, like they, they kept lo on a losing age, that they thought, I better double down so that I can remake what I lost. But I don't understand this part. Why would you go here? If it was January, <clears throat> I get that. That was January this year, last year, where it was stock fell to $100. This is where that's showing now. They mm -hmm. bet, like you said, thinking the company would go down. And then mm -hmm. they kept betting throughout the year. Yeah. Maybe, what's the logic? Because... Uh, uh, the economy was me. crashing. Yeah. I, I guess they were say, saying, I mean, I'll get later on to an article that was written, which I'm not sure they wrote, but it was written on the platform of Petri. I'll get to that in a second. But uh, I mean, you needed high conviction because they were really throwing the spaghetti against the wall with that with that bet. That's a huge bet. That's I mean, nobody heard of CESA Capital before. And now I just tell you, they're the biggest one. And they're the biggest one today with 5.8 million puts. They had three times that between April and and uh, July. Okay, right. Let's go ahead and uh, let's cover who these guys are. You've already kind of hinted sure. on it. This is uh, John that's Petri. John Petri. So that wait, maybe you want to go back one. So that's John Petri's um, Twitter account. So he actually has a Twitter account which has been inactive 
from the day mm -hmm. Elon walked with a kitchen sink into that. So I do mm. believe they have a personal beef with, with Elon as much as anyway. Oh, it, it is a very inactive um, account. It was a very inactive account before. It only had 73 posts. He is He was involved in the New York educational board. He wanted them to, to do certain things. So some of those tweets are on that. He still has it open. It still exists. Um, you see, it, it says there, hashtag keep New York City schools open. I don't know what, exactly yeah. what it was. We, we actually get to that point in a, in a second. But, uh, but um, it is still open, contrary to the second person from um, CESA who doesn't have an account. So that's the second person from CESA. This is Jay Hong. He joined CESA in 2015 as a partner. So John Petri that we just saw, he holds more than 75% of CESA's company, not of the funds that are invested, but of the, of the company that's managing it. Um, Jay has less than 5%. And there is also a CFO called Sergio Andrade. He holds also less than 5%. Jay knew, um, Jay knew uh, John from before. I think they were both at um, Columbus Hill, whatever. They, they had a couple of positions where they were, and then he joined He joined uh, John. But John is the, the, the key person of all that. And John, just to get to that point as well, he created something with Joe uh, Greenblatt, who is also one of the old-time uh, shorts on on uh, on Tesla. He called it. Uh, he, uh, he created something that's called the Value Investors Club. You can all go on there. It's uh, valueinvestorsclub.com, where deserving analysts are allowed to publish anonymously their research. So there are a lot of those old uh, Tesla bears on there writing their research, and I, I I linked to one of those articles earlier this week in uh, on my twitter and oh my gosh uh, were people um of the of the tesla q community bashing on me that oh my god she uh, including including chainos by the way uh, oh my gosh she's going after value investors club we love our value investors club sure please do so now the the, the interesting part of that is that the Values Investors Club, there is an anonymous, anonymous uh, writer. Some people think it's Brad Minchin. Some people think it's John Petri himself. I don't know. But uh, uh, his um, name is Boat 57. Now, 57 is the birth year of John Greenblatt, the second founder of this. So I don't know who it is. I, I, don't, sure. I don't have enough breadcrumbs and I don't know this world good enough. But anyway, so this Boat 57 wrote the most vile article on why you should shorten Tesla on December 27th, just after Christmas 2022. And then, as we all know, in January, Cessa put up all this huge put position, right? And then double and then, you know, quadrupled it and now put it down to a third of it. So that Value Investors Club had some influence, that article. And that article I have I have a printout. It's two or three slides further. I'll get to that in a second. Um, keep on going. No, keep on going, keep on going. So that's, yeah, this is the article. Uh, I put it, yes, no, one. no, go back. No, yes, this. So this is one. And, and in that thesis, and I'm going to link, I'm going to send the link to you so I can put it under the YouTube video as well. Um, this article really bashes retail investors. I mean, the one thing these bears all have in common is they hate our passion and they really hmm. use the words, the worst words of, um, you know, uh, how dumb we can be to still believe in Elon, to still believe in Tesla. And thankfully, they can come now shorten the stock because that's what it has to be. So this article was written because it says it on the top at 123. Then these people took action beginning of January even lower and got burned with it. And I can't say how happy I am that that happened. Now, let me just go back three pictures, if you don't mind. Because I want to I'm just sorry, tell I'm, you. I'm still reading. <laughs> talking yeah, about yeah, retail. Please do. Please do. It sounds dismissive or unkind or even worse from my point of view. I don't know. When I read this so far, it sounds like he's actually kind of like, he's like sad. <laughs> I need your uh, help. Tell me what's going on. Tell me. I, I don't know about this other, you know, like the, I don't see anything here that's really um, bashing. Oh, you uh, don't? Tesla. Oh, you don't? Oh, well, the, the whole tone is really with, with a lot of arrogance. And, and he, you know, he's trying to be satirical about how retail investors still believe into Tesla. Okay. All right. So let's go back. Let's find out who is this one. Exactly. So, yes. So just one thing to put these two personas into perspective, because people may think, okay, so this is a little hedge fund, whatever. No, no, they are well-established 
in this hedge fund industry. So this is a poker tournament that the derivatives traders organized in 2018, where both of them participated. And I just found that randomly. And, and I put this out, not because, I mean, they may play poker, I don't mind at all, but mm. just to show you, they are really part of it. They're car part of the Goldman Sachs and the Balak Rocks and whatever in this world. So this was 2018. The next one was July 2020. So that's, those are the pictures of the 2018 uh, We're All Good Friends poker meeting. And then the next one is from July 2021, if you don't mind going one further. So that's the two of them at the July 2021. We're in the middle of COVID. I know he yeah. advocated for uh, no school uh, closures, whatever. So that's the two of them. Then at another of those uh, of those derivative traders uh, poker tournaments in 2021. So yeah. there they are. I think it's always good to put faces on um, who we're talking about. They are the biggest ones. Now, it's actually funny because if you pe ask people who are the biggest shorts, they would think it's Chainers, right? He's so I, I yeah. thought it was interesting that we look at the same charts by Chainers and that's what's coming up now. Exactly. So this is uh, Kinikos Associates. Kinikos, obviously, because uh, uh, Chainos is of Greek uh, family descent. And uh, uh, so he has been short. But if you look at it, you know, his short positions, I mean, I know he's making a, a big fuss about it and talking about it all the time. And obviously, Tesla at that moment had a much smaller market cap. So it's normal that these red um, signs in the before 2019, all that they are small because obviously the market cap was smaller. But what really happened with Janus as well is really happening again in the third quarter, sorry, in the fourth quarter of 2022. And he was actually right. The fourth quarter of 2022 was a brutal quarter for, for Tesla investors. So there he was right. But then he continued sticking to it. And he actually added, you see the green part below it, he added calls to smoothen it out. So he started being a bit doubtful about what he was still holding in the first quarter yeah. of 2023. You see that because he put in on the other side a call position, then he netted it out um, uh, in, the, in the second quarter, and then he reduced it and now it's gone. So that's how it happened. That is Chenos. So all these people thinking he was short all the time. No, no, no. He wasn't short all the time. He was big mouthing or whatever you want to say. He was talking about it more than he was actually short. Um, and we have that by the SEC. So, okay, let's uh, examine this a little bit. So Chenos, sure. Jim Chenos famously is one of the biggest shorts. He called um, Enron correctly. He and did. so that's how he's become very famous. Now he's considered to be one of the biggest shorts for Tesla. But as you point out, he's actually not. He was just on TV a lot and because of his fame. And the part that, you know, gets me about these people with shorts is he called this correctly. The stock fell from 300 to $100. Yeah. But why don't they say, okay, I've made money. Stop it now. And they did not. They doubled, they doubled. And then now they're in trouble to the point where, so this whole thing about he was running a $200 billion fund assets, and now it's $200 million. And how well, much of that was lost because of Tesla? Well, we don't know that. But to be very fair, I think over 10 years, he produced 42% for his investors. I'm not saying that is fabulous, but it, it's not either nothing, right? It's not as if everybody went out there from, from, for nothing. So when people say, oh, he had a $6 billion fund and now he's at $200 million, well, there are investors who left early, right? Not everybody was sticking around. So you can't just say this is the volume and now they're only $200 million, So everybody lost okay. those $5.8 billion in the middle. That's not how it works. People may have exited his fund um, and, uh, and the overall 10-year performance of his fund is still acceptable. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's, uh, it's, uh, um, it's the best he did. He was particularly wrong on Tesla. He was wrong on the timing of the Chinese real estate bubble exploding. That was, and, and I think the problem with any non-Chinese person understanding the Chinese economy is just we don't have enough data and we don't know when government will intervene or not. I mean, we've seen actually things that did explode and it didn't have much material impact. So so betting on um, different governance issues in a country that functions so differently to our capitalism is, is, is difficult. You can't, you can't just 
put our capitalistic means of playing a market on a market that doesn't play with the same rules. It just doesn't work. So he was wrong on that one, but he was good on a couple of things. He was good on Enron. He was good on Luckin Coffee. He was good on Beyond Meat. So he's not completely wrong. And his underlying portfolio was mainly an index portfolio. So he he earned some, some, some income from that side. Um, I don't mind the guy until he puts the next vile tweet out. I mean, he seems, I don't know whether he's mon- running too much on coffee or sugar, but he seems to go through these waves being a gentleman acknowledging that what worked and what didn't work. And then suddenly he's out there uh, bashing anything and everything again. So, so um, it is what it is. Just w- what I want people to focus and take away from this video. Forget about Chanos. He's gone. He's closing shop. Watch Sessa. That is where it's currently happening. Of that 30s list, only look at those that have net positions. The others, they're playing. They're, they're playing. They may have some positions, whatever. But the ones that have net positions, those are the ones to keep an eye on. And I'm most happy to do research on other ones in that. It takes some time to, to get to the point where I'm now with CESA. But, uh, but I think we should do this regularly, at least every quarter, update our, our viewers on where we are with the current SEC filings, is it still CESA? Has somebody else taken over? Did CESA cover? Whatever. And and that way we will all be more informed about that. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. So first of all, Elon made a big deal about this saying that, you know, these shorts, <laughs> I'm going to burn them. You know, he even created the red shorts uh, yeah. as, a, as a joke. But, you know, I mean, seriously, this is, comp- these are, and that's fair. That's fair for people to think that the company will fail, that the stock will fall. But the problem is it comes with disinformation, misinformation. They're out there saying the you know information, and that's why we exist to battle that you know that that info. But as these guys, what you did pointed out nicely today is that I did not know this, which is I still thought that the shorts position was so big that it could still harm Tesla at this point. It's not. Yeah. It's kind of normal for automakers, just because automakers is tough and it's a tough business, and so that's fair. Um, uh, Chanos is gone. A bunch of them have bet wrongly this year, so they're shortened, and we're going to follow Sessa, who's the number one short right now, and see what happens to them. Because you might be predicting it that uh, we'll see what happens, you know, um, as we move forward here, but. Uh, I mean, it's 39% of their position, right? If you have a portfolio, I know how people get to my throat saying, oh my God, Alexander, how can you be all in? Well, all in, all I can lose is what I put in, right? (laughs) If you have a put position for 40% of your portfolio, you can lose that whole put position. You know, this is, this is enormous. And the put position goes quicker away than my stock goes away. I can tell you that. Well, that's why I don't understand shorts. But tell me about Microsoft, because we know famously Bill Gates and Elon, Mm -hmm. they had their Twitter exchange. And Elon said, you know, Bill said, can you please invest or donate money? And he's like, what are you talking about, dude? You, you have short, short $2 billion or something like that at the time. Yeah, I don't remember the number. But but the, the thing is, whatever it is, it is very well hidden. Because mm. I went into the um, two investment vehicles that Bill Gates officially has, one for his foundation and one for his investments. In none of those were ever any put positions or, or short selling of Tesla. So it's not in the official ones. But as I just explained with Sessa, you know, you can be a U.S. person, go invest in that Cayman Island vehicle, then it comes back I to see. the New, uh, New York based hedge yes. fund. And that is it. Yeah. So you don't have to be, you don't have to be. And and when I pointed out those CESA special vehicles in Delaware, so there again, that's another su- uh, subgroup. So if some, if a US person would not want to be caught going through Cayman Island, he could go through those special vehicles they set up in Delaware. Again, I don't, from the SEC filing, and I'm most happy to put that link up, you you don't get a clear understanding if there is one major person behind that or if it is evenly spread over the 71 investors they have. Who knows? But that could be a way of hiding it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Alexander. Your deep dive research is so valuable to the Tesla community. You've done it time and time again. And this is another one. Like, you know, few of us knew what was going on with the shorts. You've uh, unearthed the folks that we should be following just to see what they're thinking. And I'm glad that they called it wrong in this year. Um, and we'll see what happens in the following years. Nothing wrong, 
with uh, yeah. people betting that the company will fail, just like you and I bet the company will succeed. But it's uh, it's important for us to know uh, who they are and um, and they call them out if they if they come out and say you know misinformation and we need to come in and correct it right away as much as we can. Exactly. It's a battle in the media. Exactly. So <gasps> wonderful. Thank you. Follow uh, Alexandra on X as Tesla Boomer Mama. She also has a, a YouTube channel. Follow her there too. And that channel's uh, about to grow as she puts some more videos out. And uh, thank you so much, Alexandra. Thank Thanks, you, Herbert. Everybody. Always a pleasure.